friends, welcome back. Today I'm here with my friends from Hakuzan Dojo and we have for you a really special episode because Master Yaku brought us from the museum the most rare and most expensive uh, katana in Czech Republic or is, isn't katana? Uh, yes, it's not katana, it's tachi. Tachi sword. Uh, katana is worn uh, like this with a blade upstairs but uh, Tachi is older kind of sword and it's worn uh, like this, ah. edge uh, to the earth. Tachi. Tachi is older kind of Japanese sword, it's from a uh, middle Han period from the 10th century and uh, Katana is from a uh, middle Muromachi period from the uh, 15th century. Ah. So. Can you explain why they change the angle after some period? Yes, uh, it was a uh, changing of fighting strategy. Uh, Tachi was a primary weapon for cavalry. For cavalry were better this kind uh, of sword. Mm -hmm. uh, but for infantry is better katana. Because uh, we should do uh, so-called nuki uchi or uh, uh, cut immediately after drawing. This sword was made in uh, which century? Uh, this is a sword made in Kyoto, uh, in Yamashiro then, uh, in the end of 13th century, in Kamakura period. Wow. And uh, we know even the maker of this yes. sword and everything? Yes, yes, it's uh, Rai Magotaro Kunidoshi. <sighs> so it's a really very uh, interesting sword with very high artistic value. So we should maybe take a look at it or... Uh, yeah? Okay. Guys, look at that. This is definitely the most beautiful sword I have ever seen. Everything on that just screams on me rare. So can you a little bit explain about these parts and the sword? Yes. Koshira uh, or fittings of this sword is uh, very high level as well. Uh, it, this Kabutogane, uh, Menuki, Fuji, Tsuba, Obitori, Semegane, Ishizuke is made from uh, Shakuro, it's a alloy of uh, copper and gold, mm -hmm. with nice blackish uh, patina, Beautiful. and it, it is with Nanako finish. Nanako is uh, this very small pattern, look like look uh, the eggs of fishes. Jesus. Uh, and it's uh, with combination with uh, gold, of course. Wow. Uh, and a very important uh, point of this sword is this uh, kamon or family chest. Mm -hmm. It's Goshichi no Kiri. Uh, it's Polonia chest, but uh, very important is number of leaves uh, in this Polonia. Quite typical is Gosan Kiri. Gosan Kiri is 13 leaves uh, Polonia chest. Uh, it has been used with a lot of uh, families uh, in old Japan, but Goshichi no Kiri, of course, 17 leaves uh, is only uh, chest of uh, imperial family. So we know that this sword has, has been used with uh, imperial or somebody from imperial family. Wow. So, in the fact, it exists two swords in the world museums uh, with same koshirae or uh, fittings with uh, Goshichi no Kirei Polonia. Mm -hmm. One is in uh, Victoria and Albert Museum. Uh, it was present uh, uh, of uh, Prince Katsurato, uh, British uh, ambassador Sir MacDonald, uh, about uh, 1910. And the second one is in Sagamore Hill uh, Museum in the uh, United States. It was present of uh, uh, major emperor to uh, President Roosevelt after after uh, war between uh, R Russia and Japan in mm -hmm. 1905 year. Mm -hmm. yes. So this koshire or outside uh, part of sword is the same in uh, England and United States, but blade inside this koshire uh, is uh, 
uh, highest level from uh, these three sports. I can show the blade. All right, let's see. So I suppose that this one was uh, the same. So most probably it was a diplomatic present like previous two swords. Mm -hmm. uh, one interesting point is that uh, uh, blade is uh, not tired. It's it's in uh, original shape. When uh, Japanese water has been used in battle, it was a lot of hakobore or kirikomi, some, some uh, problems with the like uh, worse. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that, uh, it was necessary to uh, repolish the blade. Fix it, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, healthy uh, shape of blade uh, become a little bit weak, uh, lost some uh, material. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for this reason, it's about uh, one uh, healthy blade from Kamakura period to 800 uh, not healthy blades and this one is this healthy one for this reason uh, yes. some Japanese emperor or somebody from imperial family used this sword I suppose mm -hmm. and uh, do we know how many owners this sword actually had? Uh, I don't know uh, it's maybe it's possible uh, that uh, this sword has been handled from uh, handled by imperial family from uh, time of making of blade, and mm -hmm. after that uh, it has been presented uh, uh, on the uh, start of 20th century. Mm -hmm. I don't know much more about previous owner of this sword, but it's incredibly high level Meito or sword of very high quality and. Mm -hmm. I was very surprised to find a sword like this in uh, Czech Republic. Yeah, it's amazing and the condition is just superior, I would say. Yes. Uh, here is a nice lapel work. This, this one is uh, Takamakie with a motif of the Sakura blossoms. And ah. here is Nashiji. Nashiji is skin of Japanese pear Nashi. Uh, it's made uh, with pouring some uh, golden uh, dust into the lacquer from the Rus mm -hmm. and after that it's polishing. And the fish, the yeah, shark? Yes, uh, yes, this is a uh, ray fish uh, skin. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's quite typical for, for Japanese uh, sword. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, sword is very well balanced. Of course, it's not a weapon. Uh, Japanese sword is not only a weapon, it's very, uh, very strongly connected uh, with uh, Japanese religion, culture, history, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. But uh, if this uh, sword has to be used as a weapon, I suppose that it should be perfect. 
Yeah. You think this was used as a weapon, this one? I suppose that it wasn't used, uh, for one reason. Mm -hmm. It's healthy, played, because with, of the great so, uh, for, uh, so it was not used in battle, because every time in battle, even Japanese would uh, have a lot of defects, uh, ah, because okay. we are cutting somebody in uh, armor, Yoroi, mm -hmm. and uh, my enemy is fighting with sword as well, so of course, uh, uh, in a plate should be some uh, some hakobore or defect like this, uh, and maybe this uh, sword was not used for a fight um, once. Mm -hmm. And maybe now the thing that all people wondering is maybe the cost of the sword because you told me that it's it's, it's very high it's level. Very, very I find uh, it in uh, Toko Taikan and. 35 million Japanese yen for blade, but of course this is very unique uh, sword because of this fitting and the connection with Imperial family. So I suppose that should be much more higher. Ooh, so it's like uh, I think 300 thousand dollars, something like that, maybe, right? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> the, in the fact, uh, sword of the uh, swords of this level you shouldn't find in uh, world auctions like Satevis Christie's mm -hmm. books. Not not possible to buy sword like uh, like wow. this. Even uh, if you have a lot of money, it's not in the market because this uh, this was property of uh, imperial family in Japan. Mm -hmm. Some is, for example, some swords from uh, imperial collections uh, are in uh, Ueno Museum uh, in Tokyo, mm -hmm. uh, and this two uh, two swords. Uh, uh, with Sam Cochere's, of course, in uh, London and in the uh, San Ramon Museum. Mm -hmm. But it's all. I searched uh, if some small like this is in world collections, but isn't. Wow. Very unique. What do you think, guys? Let me know in the comments because, me personally, this is definitely the most beautiful source that I've ever seen, for sure. So let me know in the comments. So once again guys, like I said, most beautiful sword that I have ever seen. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think about it and if you have still some questions on Master Jakub, definitely let us know. And big thanks to Dubra Chayovna for this place and Master Jakub for bringing the sword to us. Really, really amazing. And you can look forward for more episodes of this series, but for today guys, that's it, so thank you for watching, share, like, comment, subscribe and see you next time.